Assalamu alaikum and welcome to Islam in Life with me Reza Ghazim. There is a lot of emphasis in Islam on remembering Allah and the need to be at peace. For example the verse, Truly in remembering God do hearts find rest. Chapter 13 verse 28. This verse seems to be talking about an inner peace. There is the sense within the Islamic framework that if there is an inner peace then the tendency towards violence will not be there and the impact will be beyond the individual to communities, to countries. Or is this just hopeful thinking? Global peace cannot be attained until the individuals who make the global population are first able to attain peace within themselves. Peace is not just absence of conflict or absence of violence. It is a positive phenomena inside of us. When our mind is quiet, our intellect becomes sharper, our emotions become positive and lighter, our body becomes healthy, and our behavior becomes much more palatable. Real happiness and peace can be found in submitting to the commands of the Creator and putting complete trust in Him. Allah says in the Holy Quran, Truly, in remembering God, do hearts find rest. Inner peace can be achieved uh, certainly through certain guidelines. As we are human being, we are uh, uh, exposed to an external world, but this external world has some influence in ourselves. Well, I think that if one focuses on himself, as in if you're willing to be determined to actually change your heart, you can change the world. If we have no peace inside ourselves, we cannot uh, even transmit anything to the uh, other people, to the society as a whole. We're honoured to be joined by our esteemed guest, Professor Tarek Ramadan, to discuss all of these issues. Welcome to the programme. Assalamu alaikum wa alaikum wa alaikum I wanted to ask you first of all, what is peace in the Islamic context? Look, this is the, a central concept. I would even say that this is the highest value in Islam. And in fact, you know, many people are saying Islam is a religion of peace. And I say no, it's not a religion of peace. It's deeper than that and more demanding than that. Islam is calling for peace, meaning it's a goal and we have to struggle, which is the paradoxical dimension of peace. It's that you have to struggle to get at peace. So in peace, it's multidimensional. You have, as you said in your introduction, the peace of heart, salamat in nafs, is that when you are tranquil and having this uh, 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 peace with your heart and, and in fact you are connected uh, with God, this is the understanding. But you also have intellectual peace, and intellectual peace is when your questions find the answer, you are intellectually at peace. When you feel good with your body, your body is at peace. Depending on your relationship with nature around you, you have to nurture this peace between you and nature. This is why in the Quran, you have Sanurihim ayatina fil afaqi wa fi anfusim. We will show them our signs in the horizons and in themselves. So there is a connection, and the Prophet, peace be upon him, was crying when he was looking at nature and God is telling him, these are signs, so you better look at them and understand. In which so there is a connection uh, uh, between us and nature, and we have to be at peace with nature. Add to this, peace between human beings. So between uh, me and the other, me and, and, and the Muslim communities and other communities and nations and tribes. All this is in the Quran. So multi, uh, multiple levels and deep understanding that at the end, what you have to do when you are with God is to find peace in every single level and dimension of your being and the being of the people around you. You mentioned about inner peace and gave a de definition of inner peace. How does an individual attain that sense of inner peace? That, that's a deep question and, and then this is why when we, you are saying the verse that you mentioned is that by remembering God you find this peace, but that's not enough. How are you going to achieve this and to realize this in yourself? And this is why uh, it's a struggle, it's an education. 
how we do we translate this as the Lord. But in fact, the very essence of the word is the educator. You have to educate yourself. And this is what we got when we, we talk tezkiyat in nafs. It is the reform of the self and the purification of the self. How are you going to do this? Tezkiyat in nafs. First, the first jail that you have in yourself is your own ego. So you have to struggle with your own ego. When you are the center of everything and your ego, it's egocentric, so you can't get peace. Because everything is about struggling and, and, and saying, as a shaitan in the Quran is saying, Ana khayrun minhu, I am better than him. So the ego uh, ended up with arrogance. The second thing that how are you going to avoid arrogance is by remembering. And what is the, 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 the opposite of remembering? is forgetfulness. This is what the Quran itself is about, a dhikr. So by the fact that you remember that God is with you, so this remembrance is helping you to struggle against your ego. And then what do you have to do? You have to uh, 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 struggle against your own instincts your own passions, your own desires, and everything is about mastering yourself. You master your tongue. You have to master your tongue. You have to master your desire. So this world is full of attractions. That's not bad in itself, but if there is excess, and if you don't master yourself, so you will not get this inner peace. So when, so this is why in the Quran we have this, those who believe and do good deeds, when your actions, your behavior is consistent with your state of heart, this is why, you, why your heart is at peace and you feel good. There is also this idea that once you have that inner peace, that's going to somehow lead to a global peace, you know, the kind of things that you've talked about in your initial answer. Hmm. And, but how is that going to be possible? I mean, that just seems such a simplistic notion in a sense that cause and effect, this will just happen. Exactly. I think that is the right word. It's very simplistic to, to think that you start with yourself and then you go to the world and this is going to be, you know, what you have in, your, in yourself is going to be uh, echoed by, by, by the relationship you have with the world. First, what is completely wrong is to think that you start with yourself. No, you have to start. You have to start with yourself, and to start with the world, and to start with your family. It's all at the same time. There is nothing like you know. I take care of myself. I pray during the night. I have this inner peace, and then I will come and do something. No, no, no. This not. It never was like this with the Prophet peace be upon him. In fact, I keep on repeating to people: be careful. The Prophet peace be upon him was trying to get peace, uh, inner peace during the night by praying during the night. But this was to change the world during the day. It's not, I pray during the night, I forget the world. So we have to understand that peace is never a final stage that you get and that's it. No, it's an ongoing struggle. You can have, a, have instant of peace with your heart and then you have to behave outside and to uh, uh, act and to do what you have to do in order to have what I was saying, the consistency between the state of your heart and your behavior. So we should avoid this kind of understanding. Start with yourself, try to get that peace, and then go and, ch and, and, and this is going to, to, to be, uh, uh, you can spread it uh, around the world. Quite the opposite sometimes is by spreading peace outside that you will get peace inside. So it's a two-way process. It's, it's an on ongoing process. But surely you can see the attraction in um, in order to achieve that inner peace, you become a recluse, go to the mountain and achieve that inner peace. And this idea that you're going to live in the midst of the mayhem of life and somehow uh, have that inner peace being created, I mean, it, it just seems really difficult because that mayhem gives an individual tension. And if you have tension, how can you achieve that inner peace when you've yeah. got this mayhem around you. You, 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 are, you are right. But what we have to say is that it's not mayhem, it's, it's life, it's about tension. To be alive means that you are facing tension. So but you how does that so, correlate so, with inner peace? So this is, this is why it's not something that you get, it's something that you look for, you seek peace. And this is why sometimes, yes, the people are right, sometimes even the Prophet, peace be upon him, was advised to exile, to, to exile himself. It's was uh, be patient with what they are saying, was and isolate yourself from them with a beautiful uh, exile. 
which means sometimes you have to take care of yourself, you have to look after, uh, uh, after your heart, yes, but not at the price of being involved within the society. Because at the end, if you are disconnected from the surrounding world, you can get peace, but it's not going to last. What is going to happen uh, is that what you have to do with this peace is then to come back to the world, and as the Prophet, peace be upon him, said, if salam spread peace. This is, we are agent of peace. Wherever we are, we need to reconcile. I'm saying to Western Muslims, why do you think that you are in the West? To be accepted, to be tolerated, or to add to this society something which has to do with reconciling these societies with their values and their practice. It's about peace, agents of peace within the society. We are not here to launch war, but at the same time, we should understand that uh, in order to get peace, we should be resistant to what is bad. So there is no peace without uh, resistance to what is bad. And this is the very meaning of Al-Amr bil Ma'roof wa Nahi Anil Munkar, commending what is right and resisting what is bad. And this is the only way to get peace. Lots of interesting things that you're saying, and I'm going to come back to a few of those points. We do like to keep this show as interactive as possible and really value your opinion. Here is what you sent us this week. <laughs> This week we asked, how can you achieve inner peace? Wazim from New Zealand said, you achieve inner peace when you stay away from all the sins and purify your soul. Your heart then becomes tranquil. Akbar from Netherlands said, I think it's all about how we train our minds. If you are a positive person, even when things are not going well in your life, you will see the bright side of things and attain inner peace. And Zara from USA said, Submitting yourself completely to Allah is the only thing that can bring human being inner peace and contentment. Reciting Quran and other supplications help in this matter. That's all the comments we have for this week. If you'd like to have your comments featured on the show, be sure to follow us on Facebook or join us on Twitter. Uh, Derek, one of, one of the things that we, uh, w I wanted to move on to was this idea of looking at the connection between peace and sabr, roughly translated as uh, patience and being patient and so on. Um, how does the idea of inner peace link together with sabr within the Islamic context, being patient? The, the, the first problem that we have is the translation with the, of sabr. Because very often we say it's about patience. And you can be patient if you sit down and you are waiting for somebody. You can be patient and passive. In fact, sabr is not about this. Sabr, it's about, once again, as much as Islam is not a, a religion of peace, but a religion calling for peace, so you have to struggle. Sabr is not patience, is perseverance. Is that you have to struggle, is active patience. Active patience. It means that you have to struggle and be patient, knowing that the results could be uh, uh, difficult to get, that you have to, to look at it. So, so it's much more about struggling. Even so, so, so patience is with jihad, in fact, is with struggling for what is right and being perseverant with all what you are doing, knowing that one day it could come, but you have to be uh, uh, patient, in, patient in your action. Uh, even that notion, <laughs> it, uh, when you say actively patient, yeah. You're doing something, so it almost seems to be contradictory in a in a sense that when you're when you're doing that, when you're doing something, you're not just accepting it. So there is that kind of notion that sometimes comes through with the concept of sabr that you've you've got to accept what's there, but you're saying it's not that. No, it's, how, it's, how do you it's, it's, reconcile? It's, 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 it's quite the opposite. It's just actively means that you have to behave, you have to act, you have to do something uh, with your faith. So this peace that we are talking about is not going to be by you sitting down and waiting for this peace to come to you. You look for peace, you seek, you are longing for peace, so it means that you have to be active. But what is essential here is as much as with my own self, I have to be active if I want to get this inner peace. Inner peace is not to sit down, it's to struggle against my ego, struggle against my desire. It's I have to be perseverant with this, meaning what? Meaning that it's not going to come all of a sudden uh, uh, for the night that you are going to have uh, the, 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 this inner peace coming. It's a very long process. And much more than that, there is a central concept here in this active 
uh, uh, patience is a tawakkul on Allah, which is I rely on God. So my patience and my hope and my perseverance, it's uh, uh, through trusting Him. So these, all these concepts are coming together and, and saying to human beings, look, you are dealing with yourself as a human being and you are dealing with fellow human beings. You are going to face, even if you call for peace, you are going to deal with people who are exploiting, who are killing, who are uh, re rejecting and attacking. You have to be persevered. You have to be uh, patient in action and then call for peace and peace has conditions. The first one is the respect of the dignity of human being, karamat al nas, their freedom, their freedom, hurriyat al nas, their uh, justice. Justice is essential. No justice, no peace. So, so you and and no justice with your inner self. If you don't give your mind, don't give your uh, heart, give not give your body, uh, their due rights will not, not get that peace. So it's an ongoing struggle and, and we have to take peace seriously. It's not like you had in the 60s, peace and love. No, no, even love in Islam, you have to learn to love. It's a struggle. It's a struggle that you need to get the very deep meaning of love and you have to get the deep meaning of peace. Some people might argue, listening to what you're saying, is that this isn't about just peace sitting back and taking it on, you're talking about something completely different. You're almost uh, linking together uh, things to do with resistance within that, this idea of peace. I mean, um, and the peace that you're talking about does not sit in with some, sometimes the generic understandings that there are of peace that are around. Yes, you are right. But I think that if you go deep in all the spiritual traditions, that are, you know, in, in Asian countries, if you just go to Hinduism and Buddhism and, 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 and if you come to uh, uh, the, the monotheistic tradition, you will see this as something which is essential. Don't confuse the state of peace with something which is passiveness or don't do anything. No, you have to, in all the tradition, what is coming to all the spiritual tradition? What is the first jail? It's your ego. So if you stay with your ego, you'll get that peace. No, you have to struggle. You have to liberate yourself from your own ego. It's generosity is coming out of education. You, don't, you are not born generous. You are not born serving the people. So all this is coming from a very deep uh, uh, struggle and relying on God, relying on the one, knowing that he is with you. This is where you get that peace. So it's be... You, we have to acknowledge the fact that we are human beings, that the worst can come out of us. So this is why the Qur'an is ending with It's everything about be careful with human beings, because these human beings can, can destroy. So we should not... Uh, I, I think that it's very dangerous to discuss the notion of peace in a state where uh, uh, it's as if... Uh, uh, it's a void where you are only with yourself and, and you are not acting and not resisting. No, you have to resist. Because we, in fact, our natural state is not to be at peace, is to face tension. This is what we have in, in the Qur'an. The way he, was cre he, he created us is we are attracted by the desire and the world, and at the same time we are attracted by what is good. We, are, we have this. This is us. This is humanity. So how are you going to be at peace? Sit down. No. Struggle. Master this. Uh, nurture that. And this is the way we'll get this inner peace. Relying on God and asking Him, but that at the end, the final uh, destination is Him. And you know that paradise, one of its names is peace. And one of Allah's names is peace. Some people will say that all of this that you've talked about is actually you've redefined the notion of peace in a sense of what is generically understood within that context. Yes, I'm just trying to speak about it from within and, and I, would, I don't like uh, what I hear today when we have you know, people going from peace and pacifism and everything. It's as if you know, uh, they are co talking about peace but there is nothing which is connected to our humanity in this peace. It's, it's far beyond what we can achieve. No, we have, it's a journey towards peace and it's not an easy one. It's very demanding. And I would like the people to take this uh, 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 value, the Islamic value of peace 
and the universal, what we are sharing with so many others, very seriously, and you have to struggle and to know the conditions of peace. And the conditions of peace is, for example, are we serious about humanity and taking uh, this equality and, and considering this equality between human beings, men and women, black and white, rich and poor? Are we serious about freedom? Are we serious about justice? Because once they, they, people want to, to speak about peace, but they don't want to speak about the reasons why we are not having peace today. So we say, I'm sorry, that's, that's, uh, that's the peace of the dominant. And we want the peace of humanity and for humanity. Uh, one, I want to move on now slightly. Um, one of the things that actually is happening uh, within uh, th this notion of actually um, hunger and hardships that people actually, many people around the world are actually facing. The Quran talks about that and actually said that uh, Allah is going to reward those people who have been the sabirin, you know, mm. people who have persevered and so on. Um, and yet that notion of having inner peace has to be there even while you're suffering. So on the one hand, there is an Islamic duty or is it to yeah. actually eradicate hardship, eradicate poverty, but at the same time there's that notion of rewarding those that are down that route. Yeah, yes. I mean surely hunger is not going to give you inner peace. Mm -hmm. Yes, you are yes, you are very right. This is something which is deep at the same time what you see when you read the, the, the Quran or the prophetic traditions, there is something about, you know, when you are facing hardship and you are perseverant and patient, you are going to be rewarded. And at the same time, we have to be subject, we have to refuse, we have to resist this. So it's not mutually exclusive. It's know how to deal with this because, in fact, these are lessons, signs that are sent to you by God. How are you going to react with this? Just refuse them or just try to get this uh, sense that this is something that you have to face as a, a Muslim or as a human being. But at the same time, it's not enough to have the right spiritual state, you need to have the right human reaction. Spiritual state, that's hardship, it's difficult, and I ask God, let me learn from that. But at the same time, what I have to learn is not to accept it, it's to understand it without accepting it. Understand that it's coming from God and don't accept this because what is coming from human being, I have to change it, so can I have I, to reform it. Can I come in there? Sorry to interrupt your flow, yeah. but one of the things that comes up with this idea, when you say that I'm not accepting it and I am going to change it, yeah. isn't that a problem in itself? Because how are you sabir? How are you kind of, you know, patient, maybe very roughly translated and perhaps a wrong translation, yeah. when you're doing those two things that are almost contradictory. Because exactly, this is exactly the point, is that you have to acknowledge the fact that it's happening, but it's not a pace, uh, pay, pace, uh, passive patience. It has to do with action. So this is what I'm saying. I'm saying that uh, when a sub is here, you are, okay, that's coming from God. These are lessons and teachings that I'm trying to get. And at the same time, he's testing me. He's testing me. And the way I'm tested is, do I remember him? And am I trying to change the world for the better? This is the two things that I have to do. So, remembering him, this is a sub, it's coming from him. And then I have to change it for the better. He's not asking us to, to just accept it as it is. No, wherever we are, we pray, we fast, we give the zakat, but we change the world. So we have to change. That's our reaction. We are tested in our reaction, and there are two reactions. Understanding that this is coming from God, so to, to put meaning to it and to uh, uh, come with a direction to our action by trying to change the thing for the better. So poverty is a fact, but we cannot accept it. As human, as Muslims, we start with the zakat, with sadaqa. So, we may accept to be poor, but we should not be accept to remain poor. We should be active, and this is the spiritual dimension. And it's through this reaction, active uh, patience, that we can get that peace. We are not accepting what human beings are doing. So we understand the lessons coming from God, and we refuse the orders coming from human beings. So these are two not mutually exclusive attitudes. 
lots of interesting points that yeah. are, have been made. Um, the religious sense of inner peace is not about accepting everything that is going on and just being happy clappy. There is a much deeper approach. Peace in the context of achieving global peace is not about the absence of resisting oppression. It is precisely about achieving justice for all. From a religious context, it is about having that inner peace because you're on that path of achieving justice by all legitimate means necessary. And because you're being true to Allah's expectation of standing against the oppressor for the oppressed. Unfortunately, that's all the time we have today. I would like to thank Professor Dariq Ramadan for joining us and I thank you all for watching. Until next time, goodbye.